six o'clock, I'll call the April 13th, 2021 meeting of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors to order. <laughs> this evening we have Pastor Steve, is it Canup? From the Fort Chisel Church of Christ to provide the invocation. Uh, <clears throat> this evening as we uh, do the invocation, if you would remember our county attorney, Scott Farthing, who's usually here, um, recently lost his father yesterday. Just remember him in your thoughts and prayers. If you would please rise and remain standing for the pledge. Pastor. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Our God, our Father who art in heaven, how great is thy most high and most holy name. You are the everlasting God of heaven, the God of all grace and mercy and truth, the God of all love, and yea, you're even the God of all comfort. And we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day in which we have been able to enjoy, to see this time of year as nature comes to life, and to look about us and certainly know that there is truly a God in heaven. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this life, blessings which we so often take for granted, but all the good and perfect gifts that you so bountifully bestow upon us, and help us to use what we have, not selfishly, but always to honor and glorify you in every way. We thank you for this occasion tonight, whereby those of this community, those who in, in positions of leadership may assemble here together to discuss and take care of those matters that are pertinent to this particular area. We're thankful for them. We're thankful for their desire to work and serve in this capacity. And we pray, our Heavenly Father, that you will bless them, provide them with direction, give them wisdom to know those things they need to do and help them to be courageous in carrying them out. We thank you for this area. We thank you for the many people who live here for the goodness that we know that exists here among us, for the peacefulness, the unity that we have with one another. We thank you for the nation in which we live. And we are certainly thankful for the freedoms we enjoy each and every day, the freedom such as this, that we can call upon your name without fear of molestation, interruption, or harm in any way. And we ask that those freedoms continue well into the future. But we pray that you will bless us as a nation, but also realizing that you should have mercy upon us as a nation, as we often allow so many abominable things to go on within our world and our society. But help us to look to you and to your word for the guidance we so sorely need in our world today. We're mindful tonight of many of our community that are facing obstacles and difficulties, those who are sick, those upon beds of affliction in hospitals and nursing homes, and especially during this time and during this last year, we ask your blessings upon those who are sick, those who administer and attend to them. And we're also mindful of those who have lost loved ones. We have one present tonight who has lost his father. And we pray, our Heavenly Father, that you will bless him and comfort him Help him to find peace at this difficult time. Be with us here tonight in all that we do. Help us that we may always glorify you every way in our lives. All these favors, all these blessings we now ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on our agenda tonight is a presentation of some sports resolutions. First, we have the George Wythe High School indoor track and field. Folks, come on up. I guess I should say with County Resolution 2021-09. 
a resolution honoring the George Wythe High School Boys Indoor Track 4x400 Relay Team. Whereas the George Wythe Boys Indoor Track field, Track and Field Team completed a spectacular 2020-21 season and whereas George Wythe High School Boys Indoor Track and Field Team advanced to the Virginia High School League's Group 1A State Indoor Track and field championship on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021 at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And whereas Dylan Jones, Cade Mitten, Justin Feltz, and Joseph Wilkins outran the opposition to the first place finish at state championship title in the boys 4x400 four relay. And whereas the board <coughs> with County Board of Supervisors officially commends the George Wythe High School boys indoor track and field 44 by 400 relay team comprised of Dylan Jones, Kate Mitten, Justin Feltz, Josh Wilkins, and coach Stephen Gallier, Gallier for their <clears throat> exemplary 2020-21 season and their display of outstanding dedication, athletic ability, and sportsmanship. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wythe County Board of Supervisors presents this resolution to George Wythe Boys High School Indoor Track and Field 4x400 four Relay Team in recognition and appreciation of their achievements and wishes them well in their future endeavors. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be incorporated in the official minutes of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors. Adopted this 13th day of April 2021. Signed, Brian W. Vault, Chair. Entertain a motion to approve as presented. So, so moved. So moved. <laughs> Can I have a second? <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Congratulations. Next one we have is resolution 2021-10-10, a resolution honoring Lake and Streeby. Did I pronounce your first name right? Yeah. Whereas the Rory Tree High School indoor track and field team completed a very successful 2021 season, and whereas Lake and Streeby of the Rory Tree High School indoor track and field team advanced to compete in the Virginia High School League's Group 1A, 2A state championship on Wednesday, March 23rd, 2021 at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And whereas Lakin defeated all other competitors to become the state champion in the 500 meter dash with a time of one minute, 10 seconds, and 43 milliseconds? Hundreds. <laughs> and, I know your teacher's out there, that's why I know. <laughs> Whereas the Wythe County Board of Supervisors officially commends Lakin for his outstanding dedication, athletic ability, and sportsmanship. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wythe County Board of Supervisors presents the resolution to Lakin Streeby in recognition of his 2021 indoor track and field state championship title in the 500 meter dash and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be incorporated into the official minutes of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors adopted this 13th day of April 2021. And I'll make that motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, sir. Next, we have Chris Sizemore. With County Resolution 2021-11, the resolution honoring Chris Sizemore of the Rue Retreat High School Indoor Track and Field Team. Whereas the Rue Retreat High School Indoor Track and Field Team completed a very successful 2021 20, season, and whereas Chris Sizemore of the Rue Retreat High School Indoor Track and Field Team advanced to the 
advanced to compete in the Virginia High School League's Group 1A 2A State Championship on Wednesday, March, March the 3rd, 2021 at Liberty University in Lynchburg. And, and whereas Chris defeated all other competitors to become the state champion in the high jump at a height of 5 foot 10 and the long jump at a distance of 20 foot 9 inches. And whereas the Wythe County Board of Supervisors the Board of Supervisors officially commends Chris for his outstanding dedication, athletic ability, and sportsmanship. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wythe County Board of Supervisors presents this resolution to Chris Sizemore in recognition of his 2021 indoor track and field state championship titles in the high jump and long jump, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be incorporated into the official minutes of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors Adopt this 13th day of April, 2021, and I'll make the motion to accept. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, congratulations, sir. Let's get a picture since Kate just walked in, so he doesn't let it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to push it out. Thank you. He said he thought he had that timed right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Let's get these guys first by themselves and then get all of them. While they're taking uh, pictures, interesting note, if you've been to any Wythe County High School, we don't have an indoor track. <laughs> so uh, it's very impressive. Yeah, it's more like outdoor track. And the reason I didn't know about the split seconds is because I was never fast enough that it mattered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on with the agenda, the next item is citizens' time. We've had several people signed up. Um, I think some of you got confused because we do have a public hearing signed up on the public hearing sheet, but I'll start with the names on the correct sign-in sheet, and then we'll move on. Um, as always, you have three minutes. Ms. Lawson will um, keep your time and notify you. Uh, the first person signed up is Linda Lacey. Uh, Linda Lacey, retired veteran teacher, taxpayer, member of the American Legion. I want to give a little history before Linda Meyer comes up to ask for a resolution. With the County Board of Supervisors, when our founding, founding fathers formed this nation, they could not have imagined the truths that they loved so much and risked their lives for would one day be hated and scorned by so many citizens or students ignorant of their country's history. We live in a very challenging time, but we are convinced that America is a miraculous gift of God. It is well documented that the Founding Fathers read the Bible, evidenced by their many phrases from the King James Bible showing up in their written and spoken words. It was the most accessible and authoritative text for the 18th century Americans. Historians looked at probate records, the records, the catalogs, letters of what people left behind when they died, and if the family owned a single book, it was the Bible. And the faith referred to time and again by Washington, Adams, and Lincoln, and by numerous documents in our country's history are the truths that made this country great. The Founding Fathers, according to the American University School of Public Affairs, Department of Justice, Law, and Criminology, looked to the Bible for guiding principles 
political order, civil authority, civic virtues, responsible citizenship, and other features that are part of a well-ordered political society. The Declaration of Independence and Constitution do not represent competing views of the existence of a supreme being or its role in American political life. They are two sides of the same coin. When read together, they tell us that the human, that the people's rights are divine in origin, sacred and unalienable, while governments are human in origin, answerable to the people, and dependent entirely on their consent. Because STEM science, technology, engineering, mathematics has been emphasized for the past 50 years over civic education, there is a divided country, one side for Americans' achievements and progress versus the other side defining America by its failures and oppressions. Does it matter whether we acknowledge the Bible's contributions to the American founding? Yes, we think it's worth preserving and recovering our civic history. Thus, our proposed resolution will inspire us all in remembering and being thankful to our Creator in His role in the life of our nation. Other states, uh, Oklahoma and Kentucky, they've put forth resolutions as well as our United Nations. They've discovered how important our civic education is. It defines on who people are. Thank you. God Thank bless you, America and in God we trust. Thank you. Next signed up is Miss Linda Meyer. Yes, good evening. Um, I'm bringing before you today, and, and I've rewritten the paperwork, um, for a resolution. We give out a lot of resolutions, and I think this one is particularly important. It honors Jesus Christ and his apostles. Um, um, whereas the apostles challenged unlimited government and unlimited obedience to authorities, censor, censoring or oppress, oppressing religious liberties by refusing to object. Whereas the 1620 Mayflower Compact spe specif specifies the reason for the voyage to plant the first colony in Virginia, in God we trust. Whereas the 1638 uh, Fundamental Orders of Connecticut reveal America's Christian foundation by enacting a government framework to maintain and preserve the liberty and purity of the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Whereas the 1643 New England Articles of Confederation confirm the singular, singular impact of Jesus Christ in colonial leaders. Whereas the 1644 New Haven Colony Charter honors the God of the Bible. Whereas Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, affirmed our Creator alone to be the source of life and basic human rights. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happy, happiness. So I am asking the, the Wythe County Board of Supervisors to honor Jesus Christ and so on. Uh, this was done by the House of Representatives in Kentucky in 2016. I think it is very valid. I have all the information here, which I'd like to pass out to you so you can read it for yourself. And I hope you put this on this resolution on your agenda in the future. And it will benefit and be a statement of our great culture and what's happened here in Wisconsin. So that would be most appreciated. And OK, now we're talking about civic education. We got some information, or I didn't get some information. Inf information came through the mail about a, the civics education and a new program. It's not a new program. It's been around for a while, but we didn't know if people, it's opportunities for up to uh, K through 12. And it's called the New Roadmap, new roadmap for 21st Century History and Civics Education. We gave this to the uh, board, the school board the other day with all the, the caveats so they could do some very interesting um, analysis and hopefully get this on the curriculum. And this information was all published in the American Legion magazine from this month. So if you'd like to look, look at that, and here's information about the roadmap. Okay. Two important things. Ms. Meyer. Yes. I don't mean to be ugly, but if you could Yes, I am fin uh, finished. Okay, now we're talking about the budget. Uh, the school board is seeking a 5% salary increase. Uh, last year, of course, we know it was unprecedented. Actual school days probably down by 95%. Salaries and so on were still paid. I realize this is no fault of 
the teaching staff and so on, but I'd like to remind you that hazard pay was given out uh, very generously and so on. The word deserve should not be in anybody's vocabulary. Taxpayers deserve not to have to have a 5% increase given out. Percentage increases are compounded every year. It's just not a one-time deal, and it is not necessary at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. Next on the list is Don Sunshine. I thought about making a motion. We get a clock. <laughs> Just right. kidding. I've addressed you before um, about my concerns and addressed the school board about my concerns about the state's model LGBTQ plus policy. The response I get is that, oh, we have to follow the law, so I thought I'd remind you of the 14th Amendment. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privilege or immunities of citizens in the United States, nor shall my, any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person with its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. And what I'm advocating for, because I think the students, the administration, the staff, the teachers of Wythe County, the citizens are great people and they deserve this, what I'm advocating for is a policy that is fair to all people and not just to the LGBTQ community and I appreciate your hearing me and you didn't even have to flip your chart. I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next signed up on the list is Emily Klein. Good evening, Chairman Bolt, members of the West County Board of Supervisors. Uh, my name is Emily Klein. I'll be reading a statement on behalf of Denise Davis. As you all know, Virginia's system of school funding is a shared state-local responsibility. Statewide, localities must match 45% must match of the cost for programs deemed required by the state. Which are the standards of quality, or SOQ? The state's required local effort for SOQs is the bare minimum at which school districts can meet the educational demands. As a result, every locality in Virginia has historically exceeded the required match for state funds for public education. The most recent report of expenditures was released in January 2021, and the trend continues with 134 of 135 localities exceeding the required local effort, or RLE, for fiscal year 2020, with the average across all localities being 82.54%. I have compared with county with surrounding localities. Those localities used for comparison purposes are listed from highest to lowest with regard to amount of overmatch provided. Montgomery, Roanoke County, Bland, Giles, Floyd, Washington, Pulaski, Carroll, with Grayson, Galax, Bristol, Smith, and Taswell. A chart was provided to you. With ranks 102 out of 135 localities in Virginia with an overmatch of 50.44% over the required local effort. With the state average being 82.54%, there were only 33 localities in Virginia that provided less funding than required for public education than Wythe County. I will repeat that. There were 102 localities out of 135 that provided more funding than required by the state than Wythe County. Three bordering localities outranked Wythe, and those are Bland, which provided an overmatch of 90%, Pulaski provided an overmatch of 68%, and Carroll provided an overmatch of 51%. All of those 102 localities that provided more funding than required clearly prioritized public education more than the supervisors of Wythe County. Wythe County's ranking on the local composite index statewide was 87, yet the rank on percent of actual local expenditures above the state requires was 102. This would indicate that WITH should be able to provide more than a 50% overmatch for local education funding. As a member of the board for the Ed Virginia Education Association, I know the struggles that teachers across the state have endured since March 2020 and continue to endure. I also know that WITH County has lost quite a few great teachers because better pay opportunities were offered elsewhere in the state. When sufficient funding is not provided for schools to operate and for school employees to receive a pay increase that they most certainly deserve, Families suffer, students suffer, and employee morale suffers greatly. 
you, the supervisors holding the purse strings, have a chance to make education a real priority in Wythe County. Will you do it? There seems to be some concern about out-of-county students attending Wythe County, but the, what is to keep Wythe County students from attending schools in surrounding localities where money, more money is spent for public education and education is evidently a higher priority? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next signed up on the list is Tracy Krieger. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Tracy Kruger. I'm speaking on behalf of Wythe County Education Association Board. An education is a civil right, and any child who does not feel safe coming to school is being denied their civil right. We are working tire tirelessly to, dis to dismantle systems of oppression that pre prevent children from accessing a great public education because of factors outside their control like their race, gender, sexual orientation, culture, or nationality. In Stacey Terry's public, now private, Facebook post, he chose to express an, an opinion in response to the support of the model policy for transgender students by a Wythe County Public School teacher. For those that do not know, the state of Virginia passed House Bill 145 and Senate Bill 161 during the two 2020 Virginia General Assembly. This law affects all public schools. The model policies for the treatment of transgender students in public elementary and secondary schools document was developed by the Virginia Department of Education in response to HB 145 and SB 161. Quoting the Virginia Department of Education, the Virginia Department of Education continues to be committed to working with school divisions to ensure a positive safe and nurturing learning environment for all students. It is important that as education leaders, we affirm our commitment to advancing equity in Virginia's public schools. Efforts to advance equity priorities include developing a culturally competent workforce of educators, closing opportunity and achievement gaps among marginalized student groups, Increasing access to high quality early learning opportunities and maximizing the potential of every Virginia student. The key guiding principle to the model of policies is that all children have a right to learn, free from discrimination and harassment. The policy minimum standards are as follows, because I'm not sure that it's been read. <laughs> One, compliance with applicable non-discrimination laws, very pertinent to all students. Two, maintenance of a safe and supportive learning environment free from discrimination and harassment for all students. <laughs> Prevention of and response to bullying and harassment. Maintenance of student records, identification of students, protection of student privacy and the confidentiality of sensitive information, enforcement of sex-based dress codes, and student participation in sex-specific school activities and events and use of school facilities. Activities and events do not include athletics. Each school board shall adopt policies that are consistent with, but may be more comprehensive than the model policies developed by the Virginia Department of Education. We acknowledge Mr. Terry's right to his opinion but not to intimidate or threaten our staff or students as part of that expression. His use of an image of bullets having nothing to do with the context of the topic at hand can only be viewed as a threat of violence. The Wythe County Education Association Board condemns that violence and we ask that the Board of Supervisors formally vote to censure Mr. Terry, we expect more from our county leadership. We demand more from our county leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next signed up is, I recognize it, handwrite, Mitchell Cook.
As some of you may know, my name is Mitchell Cook. I'd like to say hi to Supervisor Cook and Chair Vault. Um, I normally try to stay out of the politics of with County, mainly because growing up I was taught there's a few things you keep your mouth shut at the t dinner table about. Guns, religion, and politics. But there have been things that have come to light and things that have been said that in honesty terrify me that the people of this county and this board have allowed. And I'm just going to start off with, you have people that say this uh, transgender policy that's coming from Richmond is going to put students at a disadvantage or put students in a situation where they don't need to be in courses to the fact that LGBT students are at higher risks of depression, suicide, isolation, and a myriad of other mental illnesses. I am living proof of that. It took me until I got out of Wythe County to accept myself and being able to express myself because I was terrified not what the students would do to me if I opened up and was 100% myself. It was the adults outside of the school system. There's at least two teachers here that I felt comfortable with talking to. Miss Megan Patrick and Miss Deanna Bradbury. Those two teachers are some of the reasons why I'm still standing here. I have scars from where there were nights that I hated myself so much and I could not take it. There are those of us that are in the LGBT community that we don't cut, we don't take pills, we don't hang. We drink ourselves, we find abuse in substances that numb the pain, that are caused by people who are ignorant to our plight, who are callous to the, to the cruelty that they deal out. If you really care about the students, you will adopt these resolutions as they are and respect the fact that these students are just like your children. They need to be protected, cared for, and listened to. I came out to these teachers because I felt scared to tell my parents. If I had not had them to, to talk to, I would not be standing here today. I would not have became MAC captain, team, captain of my teams. I would not have been SGA president. I, did, I was able to pull through all of that because of those teachers, those teachers that you all attack with your venomous words. And it, it, it's enough. It has to end now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mary. You. Next up, we have Miss Megan Patrick, who's not a resident of Wythe County. We also have, there's a Dr. James, is it Fetterman? Yes, sir. What are you here to speak on? On behalf of the Wythe County Education Association. Okay. Um, per our rules, um, we will have to suspend our rules um, because we do not allow people that live outside of Wythe County to speak. So I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules for Some these two folks. Have second. a motion, have a second. Second. Okay. Have a motion to second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye, right, Miss Patrick. Good evening. Good Thank evening. you for suspending the rules for me. My name is Megan Patrick, and although I live in Smith County, I'm here tonight to speak as a Wythe County educator 
and a topic of interest for Mr. Terry. I understand that this board has concerns about the welfare of our students in Wythe County, as do I. The disagreement between us then is about which students we care for and how we care for them. I work to accept and support all children however they come to me. All students have a right to feel safe and valued while at school. Furthermore, it is against the law to refuse to provide all students with the basic civil rights set forth in the Virginia Model Policies for the Treatment of Transgender Students. As you make budget decisions for the school system, surely you understand that your place is to comply with the law and fund our schools for the betterment of all students. I have never before seen educators, custodians, administrators, students, or parents work as hard as we have during the COVID-19 pandemic. Cutting our funding because of your religious beliefs would not only be an egregious violation of the law, but it would also be a slap in the face to every stakeholder in the school system, every person standing behind me today. Mr. Terry's behavior on Facebook is embarrassing at best, dangerous and disgusting at worst. Although his views are his own and he has the right to them as a private citizen, he does not have the right to use an image of bullets to threaten or attempt to incite violence against me as a public educator. Far too many school children, teachers, staff members, and SROs have lost their lives to violence in schools, including this week. Mr. Terry's post cannot be taken lightly. He has a responsibility to this community and he has failed to uphold it consistently. I ask you, the other members of the board, to take action to formally censure him and make clear that violent threats are not acceptable behavior from the leadership of this county. I also ask for a formal public apology from you, Mr. Terry. With County deserves better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patrick. Next on the list is, is it Lynn Rosenbaum? Yeah. I'm Lynn Rosenbaum. I'm a teacher in Wythe County and co-president of the Wythe County Education Association, the WCEA. This is my 27th year as an educator and I've taught in South Carolina as well as Virginia. I live in Wythe County and I'm a registered voter and I'm troubled over several issues. Let me explain. I've learned that a member of the board does not support out of district students. I believe it to be an honor for a student from a neighboring county to wish to attend school here. It demonstrates that Wythe County is a desirable school system that has a lot to offer its students. The school division is paid on a per pupil basis, which translates to more students means more funding from the state for the county. That is a plus for the school system. Many of these students live close to the county line. The student's family has to provide transportation to the school, so it costs them to have their student to attend WCPS. The students that WCPS accepts have to meet a set of requirements that are evaluated on a per student request or basis. It isn't come one, come all. I taught in a county that I did not reside in while my children were younger. The county I taught in accepted my, their, my children in their system without hesitation. I could go on, but there are other issues. Main point, more students means more funding. Each year, teaching this year has been horrible. For those who believe we teachers have done nothing this year, I can give you some interesting facts from my year. I moved schools from Fort Chiswell High School to George Wythe, not a problem. My job relies on the number of special education students at respective schools. I have 13 students that I manage special education pay paperwork for. Nope, not bad either. I go to the classroom to assist teachers and students. This puts me with an average of 100 to 120 students a day. Again, about the norm for a special education teacher. Normally I have one meeting per year. Sometimes there are two for a student, depending on the situation. This year I've had 66 meetings involving my 13 students. I teach a class for an employment skills. I've had to translate all of the in-person lessons to go with that curriculum to computer-based. A little more than two hours of work for each lesson. The curriculum is planned for 18 weeks. We didn't have 18 weeks in the first semester. I've had to learn to operate Zoom, 
the Canvas learning platform, Google Classroom, document projectors, webcams, microphones, and scanners. There are days as everywhere that the internet is down, a computer program won't come up, a Zoom isn't working. Oh, and wear a mask, temperature checks, keep distance, clean in between classes, can't have lockers, so have to carry everything with you everywhere. And substitutes? We couldn't find them before. But now, when a teacher has to take a day, perhaps to go to the doctor or is sick, they now have to know if the sub can operate the equipment and understand the way more complicated sub plans. All so stressful. Then there are the mental health issues. I have four of the 13 students that I started with this year have been placed in residential setting for mental health self-harm issues. That's 25% who were not originally identified as emotionally disabled. If 25% have such serious issue, how are, how are the other 75 faring? Again, I could go on. Main point, teachers have worked harder this year than in years past with less respect and appreciation than in years past. Mandated policies are that we have to abide by. We don't have a choice, it's the law. I may be naive, but you know, I don't like the speed limit, but I have to follow it. The policy that we must not discriminate against LGBTQ students specifically is a law. We have to follow it. I do have a copy of the Senate and House bill that I held up earlier that were passed as part of, that were passed last year. This is part of the Virginia Department of Education's Education Equity Initiative, which proposes equity for all in education which the DOE has spent 11, has spent seven years working on, or several, I'm sorry, which also relates to 11 state and federal laws. It doesn't just discuss transgender students, but students of different colors, races, religions, and genders. Again, I may be naive, but I feel it's my responsibility as a teacher to accept children where they come to me from. It doesn't matter if they stink, if they're poor, if they live in a car, if they're of another color than myself, or an identity as someone, identify as someone other than what I see on the outside. Children are children. They need support from teachers. teachers. They may be from a single parent home, a grandparent's home, a foster home, or no home. Everyone can probably think of a friend or a time that you have felt singled out. Very, felt very long, short, or long term bullied, picked on, harassed for some reason you didn't understand or didn't know why it made, mattered so much. That's emotional abuse. The answer is not withholding funding. Why well, hurt all of the students and employees of WCPS by threatening to withhold funding only, or only funding is minimally mandated. Oh, but wait a minute, you don't like to follow mandates because you don't want to agree with the mandate? Well, never mind. Ma'am, if you could sum it up for me. I'm sorry, I know I have the main job, but I just try I to keep it fair. Good. <laughs> Let, here's my main point. Let the arguments over, I don't like this, so I'm going to hurt you how I can. Hmm. Grow up. Grow up. And look at who and what you're really hurting. Our children, our future. When you think of the uh, $39 million that you got from STS Group, if you will approve this, uh, and uh, insist that you have to be followed, then minimal funding will result in fewer teachers and support staffs. Programs will be cut. The progress with technology we've made will cease, and sports will be impacted. No school's perfect. Each school system hopefully strives to improve. It doesn't give, you know, funding the only minimum requirement doesn't give room for improvement. It doesn't give teachers a reason to want to return to work rather than find employment out of education, where they feel more appreciated and respected. Many teachers, after all, could get better at non-education jobs. One more minute. <laughs> don't, I didn't take the career for the money, but don't shame me by paying me as much or less than I could make at McDonald's or Sheets working the same number of hours I do now. What am I asking? I'm asking that you fund the county uh, school system, the students, because they need your support more than ever. Oh, let me ask one question. Where do your kids go to school? Thank, Thank you, you ma'am.
next on the list is Dr. James. Is it Fetterman? Fetterman, yes, sir. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I am James Fetterman, Dr. Fetterman, the president of the Virginia Education Association. Thank you so much for suspending the rules as I drove eight hours from the Eastern Shore to get here. So thank you so much. <laughs> As president of the VEA, I am in touch with our union leaders and members across the state, and also the governor and his education secretary, out of Kearney, and the state superintendent, Dr. Lane. Without exception, they say that teachers and support professionals across the Commonwealth and in Wythe County have shown incredible creativity, flexibility, and commitment to their students over the past year dealing with COVID-19. Your staff members are your biggest resource, and I so urge you to maximize your commitment to fund the school programs and staff compensation in a way that reflects the importance of their work. The members of the Virginia Education Association worked extremely hard this year, making the case to members of the General Assembly that communities like yours need more assistance from the state in funding local public schools. That help is coming. I am on the state board. I know that. In addition, members of the VEA and the NEA urge national support to help local school divisions recover from the COVID pandemic. Thanks to that work, $2 billion in new funding is coming to Virginia school divisions from the American Rescue Plan, including $7.9 million designated specifically for Wythe County. Those are some of the facts that will frame your budget decision and discussion. But as you well know, the children in our public schools and the school employees who nurture them and support them and much more, they are much more than a number. Each student, each family have unique circumstances, but a common dream to graduate from the Wythe County schools and to become a successful and happy adult. Are you willing to make that happen? Whether their path will take them here or beyond, it is our commitment and our duty. Each of your school employees began their career committed to helping every individual student make a difference and fulfill their full potential. This global pandemic has brought sickness and death all across the corners of the world, including here. But that did not defeat us. In fact, I absolutely believe that bright days are ahead of us for Wythe County and for our Commonwealth. I urge you to seize the moment and do whatever it takes to ensure that each student in Wythe County and their employees has the opportunity to reach their dreams and that your employees receive the compensation and professional growth opportunities that will keep them working in Wythe Counties and not push them to the surrounding divisions. Again, I commend the employees of Wythe County Public Schools for their students and families and I thank you for the opportunity to speak here today my name is Dr. Fetterman, the president of the Virginia Education Association, and I approve this message. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fetterman, especially for driving eight hours for, to fit that in. Next up is Ms. Lorna King. Ms. King. Hello, all. Happy anniversary. <laughs> it seems like I was just here this time last year. And nothing, has and nothing has changed. But I am not going to reiterate my disdain for that post and for what has become of that. And I am not going to reiterate what everyone has said. But I'm standing in solidarity with everyone who has talked before me. The only other thing that I can add to all of this discussion about all of this is the emotional toll that this year has taken on everybody, but especially teachers and especially students. And so to stand up here and to listen to these kinds of discussions really makes me reevaluate my choices. Because I have given my heart and soul to this county for 21 years, and Mr. Cook, I have worked for you, and you know what I work like. And I am not the only one that works that way. All of you that are in here that are teachers have, have the same story to tell. And I would hope, I would hope that clear heads would prevail and that you would invest in our children because I certainly don't do this job for the money. 
<laughs> I could go home in, in the evening and rest and not worry about my child or my children or my students. But I can guarantee you, when you have one to come to talk to you who has no one else to talk to, maybe you'll think a little differently about your diatribes. And then maybe you will talk with respect to the educator that you couldn't even call a human being. Now that's all I have to say about that. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Kim Aker. Is that correct? And it ain't so much your handwriting but my eyes. So I apologize. Well, um, a former teacher wrote it down for me because I came. I teach adult ed also, and I came from that class. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I was on there. Uh, my son was supposed to get here, and he is running late from work. So um, he has signed up next as Seth Chumbly. Um, so I would like to ask one of the teachers to come and read the last part of this because I'm going to run over. Um, I did my research, and I looked at your procedure list, and it said you had five minutes to speak. That's in. That's on the web page. I looked it up last night because it was 12, that's for public and I cut hearing. it down. But I'll tell you what, since you did do your research, because I, I believe in extra credit. Thank you. <laughs> that's because that's what it took to get you through To get school. me through school. <laughs> Unless anybody objects, I'll let you read his too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, you don't have to come up now. <laughs> but I do have to put the old lady glasses on. Sorry. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I do thank you for this opportunity. I'm Kim Aker, a 25-year veteran teacher of Wood County. For at least eight years, I represented the members of the Wood County Education as a president or a co-president, and I've spoke before you a, bu a bunch of times. I was very proud when I was in Hampton or Richmond or Roanoke or Virginia Beach, where we have our Virginia Education Association conferences, when I was around other educators to say our Board of Supervisors and our school board had a wonderful working relationship of mutual respect and support. I cannot say that now. I'm embarrassed and quite frankly angry at the politics and backdoor personal agendas that have surfaced in the last few years. We have a problem and we the citizens and employees of Wood County need it repaired. I have high respect for each of you on this board and those in public office. I've taught your children, I've taught, I've coached a lot of your children. And I've been able to communicate with almost everybody. I don't know Mr. Violet and I don't know Mr. Smith, but everybody else I do. I think and I hope that you know that I'm an honest, professional, and friendly person. I work hard and I'm a straight shooter. I'm also proud to say I am a Christian and I try to live my life in such a way that it's evidenced not only by my words, but by my actions and character. Sadly, I fail daily, but I do strive to do that. I've tried to teach my sons, my grandchildren, and close to a thousand students now that character is what you do and say when you think no one else is watching, but also to be aware that someone is always watching. They see what you say vocally, in emails, in texts, and especially on social media. Our children are watching. They have watched many elected officials say and do things over the last few years that in my opinion are appalling. I don't claim to be a Democrat nor a Republican, so before you close your ears, just know that. I am, however, what's known as an informed voter. I don't take rumors or claims as truth until I can prove them, and I'm shocked by the truth I've seen. So I wanna educate a couple of you that appear not to know the truth as well as a few in the audience. Teachers have endured the worst 13 months of our lives. Yes, students and parents have had a very difficult time the last 13 months as well. However, some seem to think that the teachers have sat at home and done nothing. That's a lie. Let me be clear. We have worked harder in the last 13 months than in the last 24 years I've taught. We've learned multiple new computer programs and techniques to try to reach each and every student, both in person, online, virtual, and most of the year, we've done both. Which for those of you who don't live our lives, let me explain. It means we do it on our own time, early mornings and late nights, far beyond 7.45 to 3.30. Teachers have basically been on call from emails, dojo, class tag, text and social messages 
trying to help parents, especially those that have working schedules. Have we succeeded? Yes, in many, many cases. 100%? Nope, and I'll be the first to admit that. We have dealt with the same technology issues that every family in Wythe County and in Virginia and most of the U.S. have. We've had the same problems with child care, trying to work from home, and trying to avoid a pandemic. We've had the rules, procedures, and guidelines change almost daily from the governor, the State Department of Ed, and then our county school administration because you all well know everything trickles down. You make a plan, the next day, nope, we're not doing that, we're doing this. I personally have driven to my school and sat in my parking lot at various times of the day and night just so I can have internet access. I have increased my satellite driven internet because that's all I can get where I live out on Peppers Ferry Road, boasting cost and megabytes in attempts to have a decent service so I can record multiple, multiple hours of lessons, be on Zoom meetings, Google Meets, and anything else that's been asked of me, just like all these educators and the 300 other of us, just like parents grandparents and these children. Hopefully that clears up at least one lie that the public has tried to spread. Last year there were no raises or steps for any school employee and we all understood. We were in the middle of a pandemic and it shut down businesses, employers, and companies and that's what provides the taxes to make it happen for funding. We get it. This year the legislators proposed a 5% increase Anyone with any knowledge at all knows that that means the county has to chip in to make it work. Our standards of quality are set up by the legislators and they've never been fully funded. We have necessary positions to make a school system work anywhere in Virginia. And you all know they don't fund it all. For those of you that don't know, <clears throat> that means School counselors, nurses, many paraprofessionals, and some of our present teachers are not funded by the state or federal government. Our county has to do that. Our county has, for many, many years, funded above the LCI, which is Local Composite Index, for people that don't know. That's the mandated amount that the state says you guys have to. Because the Board of Supervisors was knowledgeable enough to know we need those positions to make our students successful. Our superintendents and the school board, at least for the last 25 years that I've taught, has always provided a raise to every employee when funding was available, not just teachers. Because we can't educate them if Mr. Horney and these great bus drivers don't get them to school. We can't help our, para, our uh, special education students if we don't have our paraprofessionals, like his wife. Without our cafeteria workers busting their behinds this year to make sure we're feeding breakfast and lunch to our students, whether it's on a bus, out of the back, with a bag, or it's in person. And our custodians and maintenance workers have worked like dogs to keep our schools clean even with piles popping off the floor, you know, we don't need a new school at Spiller. No, 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 no. Toilets overflowing because we have busted water lines and rookie le re re le 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 <laughs> leaking roofs. Even in my library, that's the new part, okay? These janitors and custodians are trying to sanitize hourly, and then they're walking along and picking up milk buckets outside the doors. I'd love for you all to come watch during the day milk buckets, and trash bags because all the students have to be six feet apart. We can't fit them in the classrooms. We've got them in every crevice in every school spaced out. So that's what the janitors have to do all day long. We get done with breakfast, then they come back through and pick up all the trash bags and more milk buckets. I've driven a school bus too. I was certified, I did it for years. I've helped serve meals from a bus and I helped serve them in the food lines when they need it. I've cleaned up vomit, spilled milk and food. I've given out medicine in the absence of the nurses after I was trained of course 
And honest to goodness, I'm sick of sanitizing every surface that's around. I don't say that for a pat on the back. I say that because I know what every employee in West County Public Schools, how hard they work. Every day, every day, they, each and every employee of West County Public Schools deserve a raise. Deserve it. Currently, with County Funding of Education, as you've already heard from Denise's statement, ranks 102 of 135. Some people back there will probably say, well, that's better than 30 others. And some of you understand how sad that makes the value of our children's education. That we're ranked at 102 of 135 counties. And in full disclosure, I've resigned already. At the end of this year, I've resigned to go to a small neighboring county for $6,000 more in salary. So it's not for me that I'm talking. 25 years I've given this county. And this is the kind of respect we get. I have high respect and gratitude for the members of our police departments, particularly our SROs, Sheriff Dunnigan, and the others who do their job well and justly to provide safety for our children and all of our citizens. And I'm really impressed at how Sheriff Dunnigan found a way to get the necessary funding to have an SRO in every one of our schools. However, let me educate just a little further since that's what I do, and I'm sorry, I know I'm way past my time. In the midst of all this, the state continues to try to make things equal and safe for all children, regardless of their race, their skin color, or their gender. And they have mandated a policy to adopt, to attempt to stop bullying and profiling. Our school system has to adopt this policy. I don't personally agree with many people's sexual preferences. I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. However, I have many friends who've chosen other lifestyles. But you know what? It's not my job to judge them. I'll leave that up to my God. I also believe no educator or elected official has the right to discriminate based on race, skin color, gender, or sexual preference. It is our job as educators and as elected officials and sworn officers of the law to keep them safe and not permit others to harm or harass them. It is also not an elected official's job or right even in the United States of America with free speech, to harass a teacher for doing her job. This governing board cannot withhold funds because of personal beliefs. It's unethical, it's unprofessional, and it's probably illegal. People of Wythe County, there's a few board members that have decided to further politically divide by spreading false truths about what the school board and one teacher in particular is trying to do. They must adopt a policy about LBGTQ students. It's from the Department of Education. Pursuant to code 22.1-23.3, local school divisions should adopt policies, procedures, and practices for an inclusive school environment that are consistent with blah, 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 blah. You've heard it already. I do not want my five-year-old granddaughter in a bathroom with someone of another sex for her safety and for theirs. That's why a policy has to be put in place to protect all of our children. This teacher in question simply wrote a letter to the superintendent in support of a policy. She's a kind, caring, open-minded individual that provides a safe place for students that are ostracized by others because of their gender identity. She does not promote or preach any way of life to students. She demonstrates that she cares about them regardless of where they look or their choices. She simply allows them to feel safe for a brief time of their school day, free from harassment or bullying. I want every child in Wythe County to feel safe when they're at school. Just last Thursday, a kindergartner saw our SRO, Mr. Cooley, he's fantastic. He was out on the playground. And he said, why, why do we have to have a police officer out here are bad people going to come and hurt us? That's what, that's what our schools have come to, guys. And Mr. Cooley, he, he, he honestly said, I didn't know what to say. He said, so I looked at this child and said, no, nope, not while I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm just a nobody. But I am a voice for people who don't feel they can express themselves in public. She is a teacher who loves kids even those that sometimes it's really hard to love. 
She cares about her fellow educators, and she includes every person. I, I care. I wrote this so my son could say it, and then he's not here. Sorry. I care about my fellow educators and every person employed by the school system. We don't always agree with their decisions either, but I respect them. People, we have to wake up. My pastor said, and I believe he's right, that we can't quote scripture to beat others down. That's just mean. And in my opinion, it's as hypocritical as a so-called Christian can be. In my Bible, it says to love my neighbor. I don't have to agree with them. You all do not have to agree with them. I may not like their choices, their political party, what they do, but we are called to be a light to others. And every one of you, as a member of the Board of Supervisors, has been elected to represent all of Wythe County. Every skin color, race, gender, and those of different sexual preferences. We don't have to like it or agree with it, but you do have to be ethical, professional, and legal. We, as the citizens of Wythe County, demand it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going back to teach. That's all we have signed up for citizens' time. With that, I'll close citizens' time. Uh, before we move into the public hearing, um, I just want to make a couple comments from from my chair. Um, I, I'm not sure where the I'll call it rumor. I, I don't. I guess that's the best way to describe it. Um, that we discussed that teachers didn't deserve five percent raise. As a matter of fact. You'll go back several meetings, and I don't know, Mr. Baird might remember the date when Dr. Jeffries and Dr. Poole um, were up here and gave us an update. Um, almost, or I assume every member up here sat here and bragged on teachers because I know how hard you worked. I know how much you hate Canvas, I hear. Um, but as far as anybody that sat up here in our budget discussions and said that we didn't support the pay raise. There's an old saying, there's lies, damn lies and statistics. Well, it's not a lie and there's no numbers attached, so you figure out what that was. Um, as, my, as for myself, two years ago, myself and Miss Lawson, with a previous board, fought to get an extra $500,000 worth of funding because the school board come up here and said our special ed numbers are going crazy. We pushed to get George Witt's renovation done with the appropriate amount of money. Now, knock on wood, it come in cheaper than what I said because I said 15 million. I think it come in 11 million. Miss Acres is spot on. Um, this got started because some people don't like me because I'm a Republican and it's called gaslighting or some people don't like me for whatever reason. But you're right. We, the boards do need to get together. My first year on the board, I begged that we met throughout the year. I said, it's not fair for with County Schools to come up here at budget time, throw a number at us, and we've got two months to come up with the money. Let's meet throughout the year. Open invitation since I've been sitting in this chair. We haven't met together since September 2019. I'm the one that brought up out-of-county students. I do have a problem with that. Last year, I brought it up to the school board. What they do this year? They added 11 more out-of-county students. We're trying to make up a $2 million deficit without raising taxes. We know eventually we're going to have to raise taxes. I can't vote for a tax increase while we're educating kids whose parents don't live in Wythe County. That, that's my vote. I talked to a gentleman today whose wife is a teacher. They live in a modest house. They have three kids. They have four vehicles. He showed me his tax ticket. Last year, real estate personal property, he paid $1,800. He has one child in school. We spend per pupil on local funding $3,650. That means they don't even pay for their one child in school. That neighbor next to them that don't have kids, their tax money. I don't have kids, I happily write that check every year because I know over 100% of real estate, personal property in Wythe County 
goes to the school system. I want a good school system for kids in Wythe County. But as far as the raise, whoever told you that three members up here didn't want y'all to get a raise, they're a damn liar. Find that person that says, I said it, and I'll give you 5% out of my pocket of your salary. That's as fair as I can be. I appreciate what y'all do. I've said it for this is my fourth year. I've said it. I've always supported it. I can't support out-of-county students when they added it. It comes up to 240,000, 40. Yeah, it's what we talked about. Miss Lawson brought up a good point. How are they going to make it up? Two years with county school board bought a house on East Marshall Street. They can't use state and federal money for that, so it come out of local money, which is instruction money. I have concerns about that. That house is sitting there going down. The real estate market is sky high. They could sell that house and make up that difference. You know, that's, I just don't think they should be doing that. That's my opinion. I have concerns that for the first time in I don't know how many years, there was actually a school me board member voted against their budget. That, that's concerning. <coughs> their <coughs> spouse then went on social media and typed up a big post and said, if the board of supervisors members are reading this, you shouldn't vote on that, on their budget. I have concerns about that. Um, Ms. Rosenbaum, I know you spoke before, you know, they didn't post their budget so people could review it. Now we've got till July 1st, of course, to approve one, but that's concerning to me, why they waited so late to post it so the WCEA and VEA representatives could review it, interested teachers, you know, I sat and listened to Mr. Powers' <clears throat> presentation the other day. I don't know if there's another board member up here that, you know, I took notes. 44.1% surveys unsatisfied with their salary. 35.8% satisfied. 9.3% very unsatisfied. If I didn't care about teachers, I wouldn't have listened. I wouldn't have wrote that down. The shocking thing is one teacher spent over $1,000 out of their park pocket for classroom supplies. I'd like some answers of, you know, on the county side we give 13.6 million. Why is there a teacher have to spend a thousand bucks? But that's not our place. With that being said, I'll shut up and if anybody else wants to chime in, go ahead. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you all very much. I'll give it. Okay. I was just gonna say um, I was going to save this for my um, supervisor time uh, on down the agenda, but I'm afraid you all might leave because people don't like to stay for our whole meetings. They get long. And I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame you either. <laughs> so got, they might be an update with Canvas y'all need to learn. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet, but I just want to tell you all, I really appreciate you all. And if you don't know me, I have support, I've always supported the full school budget and I always will support the full school budget. It's not perfect, but I do not, and I will, I actually go a little bit further and say, I'm a religious person, and, but I do not allow that to ever come into play on how I vote on the school budget. So, and I'll leave it at that, but, and I don't mean that ugly toward anyone else. Everyone's got their own opinions. That's just my opinion. I'm only one of, or one of seven people, but, but I will support you all. I do not ever want to take from the teachers or the children. So I'm proud of our Wythe County Public Schools and thank you all. Anybody all else? Time. All right, thank y'all. Like I said, y'all are free to leave. Not much exciting happening. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is a public hearing for the surplus real property. Mr. Barry, if you'll read the public hearing that note. Actually, let's take a five minute recess. If they want to leave. And... All right, we'll call us back to Order, Mr. Bear, if you read the public hearing notice. The Wythe County Board of Supervisors will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April 13, 2021 at 6.05 p.m. to hear comment on for potential conveyance of lots in Progress Park or on Chapman Road from any of the following tax parcels, 2761, 
2759, 42, 41, 43, 26, and 2759A. The hearing will take place in the boardroom of the County Administration Building, 340 South 6th Street, Withville, Virginia, by order of With County Board of Supervisors, Stephen D. Dare, County Administrator. That I'll open the public comment. I have one person signed up. Former Board of Supervisor member. <laughs> Blackfleet District, correct? Correct. Blackfleet <laughs> District Supervisor, Mr. Andy Kegley. Just got back. <laughs> yeah, hey, tonight, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I know Miss Crockett. I'll help her cook. We'll switch places. <laughs> limited time offer, I'm just saying. Yeah, because when I was sitting in that seat, uh, you were probably at a Royal Retreat High School, 1990. <laughs> Uh, I graduated in 95, so maybe middle school. Okay. I don't want to age you. <laughs> Close. It was all the same building, so yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Andy Kegley, I'm director of Hope Incorporated. And um, um, it may be empty to say this right now, but I want to go on record to say out loud that I stand with the uh, folks who spoke from um, WCEA tonight. That was pretty powerful. Um, and I mistakenly signed up for that slot instead of this, and I maybe should have spoken over there too. But, no, sir, uh, you signed up on the right one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I want to talk to you is about is housing, and I want to say, first off, congratulations on your announcement last week. I don't think that's been said tonight yet. Um, you know, that's, that's a big deal. It's been a long time coming to have an announcement like that. Uh, I know 30 years ago when I was sitting in y'all's seat, it was a really big deal, and we didn't even have Progress Park on our, in our vision. We were still working with, um, out here in uh, Fairview Park. Um, so I know you all want more announcements like that. I know it's important to the tax base. I know it's important to the quality of life. It's important to the growth of Wythe County. Um, and, you know, I, from my experience, and again, I've watched local governments for a long time and been involved with it in the past and still kind of involved with public policy with the housing and food security work we do. You know, I think there are three reasons why an international company like STS Group AG will come here. I think they're, they, they like the quality of life. I think they like the schools. And I think they know there's a, an employment base that they can put to work and, you know, make a product. Um, there are other factors, you know, that, you know, the, the tax base, um, incentives are big deals too. But the handout, uh, did it get passed around, Steve? Yeah. Um, that was something that I put on our e-blast that came out just yesterday. We do it weekly. And um, the top image, that little bumper sticker image, is something that we created back before Hope was known as Hope when we were still known as Mountain Shelter. That was a bumper sticker that my then five-year-old daughter drew the little picture of the house. And we borrowed the image, the, the, the phrase, houses where jobs go at the end of the day. And we put these on bumper stickers, and they got actually picked up by the West Virginia um, Housing Agency and by Tennessee Housing Authority. They've all asked for permission, or we printed extra ones for them to distribute because that little message says a lot about y'all's job in trying to get more jobs here. So last week, when the announcement was made by the governor's office, and when I saw it on social media, I made the comment to the JIDA page. I said, I guess this means we need to build 120 new houses. As I said a little while ago, the real estate market is, inventory is extremely low. You put a house, you talk about putting a house on the market, a house in your neighborhood. <coughs> There were four offers practically before the announcement was made, mm -hmm. and there were more than what it was listed at. Um, the, the real estate market is really, really crazy right now. And um, so I don't think 120 people will be moving here for these new 120 jobs. I think you'll be able to grow them from people in Wythe County. Um, but the next plant, in the next plant, we have this huge critical shortage of housing in Wythe County. And um, it's not just upper-end housing or even middle-end housing. I have a little statement in here that the housing programs we administer for the homeless, the homeless numbers have gone through the roof in the past year because of the pandemic. We, through last summer, we had 45 homeless 
households in three different motels here in Wythe County. Pre-pandemic, we might have had one or two households that were homeless that we were supporting in a motel. Um, those 45, and today it's about 15, we have funding to pay for their deposit and move-in rent in an apartment or a house or a trailer in Wythe County. They can't find a place to move. So we're spending precious dollars on motel right rates at about 45 to $50 a night, where if we could pay the deposit and move in rent, and we we're even able to offer some other landlord incentives, if we can move those people out, they're gonna do a whole lot better than they're doing in a motel. Statistics show that, that they, homeless families do better when you're in a house, not a shelter. So um, there's a huge housing shortage. I don't know much about y'all's the, the potential, the, the, the public hearing you have, you're having right now, and I understand I'm, I'm the only speaker, but um, I looked at the tax maps and um, uh, I haven't done any kind of engineering work or don't know anything about what could be done, but I just want to plant the seed for you all to think about. If you've got surplus land and if you're interested in growing new jobs, I think, I think it would go a long way towards solving multiple problems if some of that land could be given to not just Hope, but the Housing Authority in Withville, um, or with other covenants that makes it affordable, then you're gonna be able to um, show the next prospect for the, the mega site, Lot 24 down there, um, or anybody else that y'all are concerned about the infrastructure supporting those jobs. You know, where jobs go at the end of the day is the house. That's where those folks lay their heads at night. So. Um, uh, I'm happy to make this an ongoing conversation. You know, if we can get together and brainstorm about some of this, um, I don't imagine we'll hash it out and resolve it tonight, but uh, uh, I will hope we can work towards some kind of resolution that would um, um, build more homes. Thank you, Mr. Kegley. Mm -hmm. sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's all we have signed up for the public hearing, so I'll close the citizens time for the public hearing uh mr bear is there do we need to just take action to declare surplus or? No, no action needed at this time um as your mr kelly referenced there obviously we've had an announcement uh and we'll be uh surveying some land here in the near future to in order to convey uh and this will meet the requirements of 15 to 1800 that we had a public hearing for the conveyance of land on that in the process um, and, and that's what i i I thought it was, but I just, yeah. I know there were several parcels on there. And, and, and there were, and that was just for general purposes. Uh, the other parcels are the, the, uh, the parcel adjoining the Apex Center down there where we have not uh, decided to develop into the lots down there. So it is on there should there be an interest uh, or a party or someone to convey to, whether it's, it's something like Hope or whether it's a, uh, a, a buyer or whatever that that land could be considered uh, for sale. And Mr. Kegley, I will tell you, if you don't think anybody reads your thing, I, was it this morning or yesterday morning? Yesterday morning. Okay. I did read it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is the payment of invoices. And I'll entertain a motion to approve the invoices. So moved. Have a second. Second. Is there any invoice any member wants to pull out or discuss? Here and now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of our previous meeting, March 23rd, 2021. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. McRoberts. Have a second. Second. Ba is there any questions, discussion, or corrections? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Terry. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 So approved. Next item on the agenda is old business. Mr. Barrett, do we have anything under old business? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, do not have anything under old business for this meeting. At the next meeting, we will need to uh, <coughs> address a few of our um, vacancies on the uh some of our our boards that are out there i shared an email on mountain cap board with all of you all that we may want to take in consideration the upcoming <coughs> meeting as well excuse me we also 
Do we also have some openings on the WCC board? Two are coming open are coming on the WCC up. board for July 1st, yes. So if, uh, if the clerk will assist me, we'll put that under old business for next time for, for those that are coming up. All right, we'll move on to new business. The first item is the passenger rail extension support resolution. Mr. Barry, you want to proffer that? Uh, we'll do so. Uh, on uh, page uh, 6970 of your package, you see a letter from uh, Senator uh, Todd Pillion and Delegate Terry Austin uh, regarding um, passenger rail, extension of passenger rail uh, to Bristol. Obviously, with a lot of discussion of infrastructure funding out there, uh, timing is critical and, and obviously want to show our support. Um, we think that passenger rail coming through this area would be beneficial for our area and also farther southwest Virginia as well. Uh, we have a uh, draft uh, resolution. I will say I'll express my appreciation to Mr. Hankins for uh, his assistance in drafting this resolution for your consideration. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution as presented. So I'll have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions and or discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote for Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Next item on the agenda is the county office building edition. Mr. Baird. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. What you uh, have before you there is a proposal from the Lane Group for the, uh, the building uh, next door. Um, Mr. Kenser has been working consistently with them, uh, the Treasurer and the Commissioner, on uh, the layout uh, of that building. And um, the, um, we uh, recommend that we approve uh, disagreement uh, with the working drawings and the building and contract negotiation fee but at this time that we uh, do not include the construction administration and that we use our county engineer to do the construction administration so I would recommend your approval of the agreement uh, leaving out the construction administration entertain a motion to approve the agreement with the without including the construction uh, administration. So moved. Have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Have a motion a second, open the floor up for any questions or discussion. Mr. Baird, what's the timeline on this project? Uh, the timeline is on page 74, 75. Um, Basically, you got 150 days for the, the working phase, and then you have a 10 days there, and then, then the advertisement, and then a year construction period. So they are anticipating a total time frame there that you will see of a little less than two years. And I, Mr. Smith must have been taking a drink. He didn't jump on this, so I'll ask you, it's turnkey? Yes, yes, it is turnkey. Uh, for everybody. Let's come over and get the hammock. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? My yes. only, my only question would be: This meets our needs. Yes, it, I mean it. It does. Um, it, it. You know, we built the building that's over there now in 2012, and and, and departments are, are pushing at the seams as it is right now. Um, we certainly have workspace here that we can continue to work in. We've got space there. The commissioner and treasurer have drawn up uh, areas that work for them. This does not move all everybody over here, as we talked about it last year. We talked about this in the budget that there was no need to move everyone from here over there. Um, we already have four people, soon to be five people, working over there uh, in the other building as it is. That'll give them room to move over to, to this side of the building, open up more space for the uh, partly, for potentially Department of Social Services or others in the process. And bring Commonwealth Attorney out of the basement. 
And then long term, the next step would be moving the Commonwealth Attorney out of the office up into into the, the basement or the first level of the courthouse. And the price tag? For this right here is um, $97,000. Okay. What's the cost of the entire? Uh, the estimates based on current construction costs are in the neighborhood of $3.5 million. We're going to hold off for just a little bit to see if the price of construction goes down. Well, the, the, certainly you've got, you've got six, seven months before they would be even having it out to bid right now in the process. So we're hoping at that point in time, but when the, when the design is done, if it's not an advantageous bidding time, then we can certainly look at holding up and, and bidding it another time. Yeah, I think, I think for me personally, I'm not saying we don't need the building, but when you've got people that's needing county water, yep. it's kind of hard for me to, to support it. I'm just being honest, so it's, I'm just speaking for myself at this point. Especially when you got people at 2043, you know, under that comprehensive plan, 2043 before people get water, Whew, that's a tough one. How much, now we've got money that's hanging out there that that's what it was borrowed for. Yes, right? we did, and in fact, with the Chase, uh, with the Chase offering, that we did uh, end of last year, we actually borrowed the additional $2 million for the construction of this building. So we have already borrowed the money uh, for the construction of that building. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 No. So approved. Next item is the Commonwealth Transportation Board virtual public meetings. Yes, this is informational purposes only. Uh, usually I like uh, trying to go to their actual in-person meetings when, when they've had them in the past uh, just to uh, be involved in their, in their overall six-year improvement, not our secondary six-year plan, but in their plan, uh, obviously. Due to changes, they will be doing that virtually this year, so it's at 4 p.m. on April 27th. I uh, just wanted to let any of you all know if you all were interested in attending. What, what was the time on it again, Steve? 4 p.m. on April 27th. 27th. Oh, <laughs> and, and just number one, it's just there, there are several projects. I mean, uh, obviously, this is the group that approved our... Um, smart scale project that we currently have for the connector road out there. Um, there is currently a study going on to looking at the exits of 81 and 77 and what improvements may be needed out there in the future. Not that any of that will be here, but that this board will be at least deciding in the future uh, impacts or making decisions that could impact funding for those projects in Wythe County. And that date, one more time? Please. April 27th. We have a board meeting at 6, but 4 p.m. that should probably be done by then, right? Yep. All right, next item on the agenda is mutual aid agreement with the fire and EMS. Yes, we've uh, continually had uh, mutual aid agreements. Uh, I've had county attorney and um, Mr. Martin have been, I think, assisting with the process, but... I think the most recent agreement was 2010 or so, and before that may have been in the 90s or somewhere in there, and I don't know if Jimmy has dates, but basically what we have is a, um, uh, an updated mutual aid agreement for fire and EMS services between the county of Wythe and the towns of Withville and the town of <laughs> Rural Retreat. Uh, basically, it just been updated uh, and readopted. Just in simple terms, it says that we will be providing assistance to them from our departments, and their departments will be providing assistance to us uh, in the framework. Obviously, with Withville Fire and Rescue um, reorganizing, or the Wythe County Rescue Squad and, and uh, Withville Fire reorganizing the Withville Fire and Rescue, just uh, updates that uh, policy or that aid agreement. Entertain a motion to approve the mutual aid agreement. So moved. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? 
Here and then we'll do a roll call vote for Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is surplus equipment. Mr. Chairman, uh, Ms. Collins has been working hard on selling some vehicles and been working with staff on uh, cleaning up uh, some vehicles uh, down at the um, Billy's office at the uh, Buildings and Grounds building. Um, she has a list here um, that she has presented that she requests to declare surplus and will list it on Gov deals. And she also handed out an additional memorandum. Uh, Chief Deputy Foster has been doing the same thing with vehicles and he has a uh, 14 Ford Taurus uh, to be sold and staff would request that uh, you could approve all of these. Uh, to be declared surplus, and we'll list them on Gov deals to dispose of them. Can I entertain a motion to declare this? Can I request? I'm sorry. Can I request that we vote on the sheriff's office vehicle separate? It ain't no conflict of interest because it's in pieces. I'm not taking my chances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking my chances. All right. I'll entertain a motion to declare the. Uh, Equipment surplus to be sold on Gov deals as prepared by Ms. Collins. So moved. Have a second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Now, entertain a motion to declare the sheriff's office vehicle a surplus and hopefully sell it on Gov deals. So moved. Have second. a motion. Have a second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, and aye. me and Miss Lawson will abstain. Abstain. All right. You, uh, you, you could almost know. pass a resolution <laughs> for Miss Collins and the staff for what they have to do with selling these things. And I appreciate all the work they have done. I appreciate the Sheriff's Office trying to help us get rid of some of those vehicles down there. So, uh, but, uh, it, it, as, as weather warms up, Martha, um, I will give you helpful advice that you probably already figured out. Always carry some yellow jacket spray. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like climbing in a Crown Vic and realizing there's a nest in the door jam after you're already in it. <laughs> or, well, uh, I'll take a cat. cat? Uh, that's all. That's all you've got on new business. You have anything else? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've got one thing. Um, we got some gentlemen in, in the back, and I guess they missed a chance to speak. But uh, Mr. Tolliver yes. uh, from Abington Ambulance Service, they're interested in um, yeah. what you call it. Uh, Non-designated non yeah. emergency response transport is what they are interested in, um, uh, similar to what we have previously approved with Richardson's. Um, do you have their contact information? Mr. Tolliver has just called me, I think left a message today as well, and I have got in touch with them, and we are working on that to get the information for you all to approve that. And we don't have it on the agenda tonight, but Mr. Barry, get in touch with y'all. Well, you picked a good night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next on the agenda is board reports. Uh, first up is the Water Committee. Uh, the Water Committee met on April 1st, 2021, after 14 canceled meetings. <laughs> it, rec <laughs> it recommends reimbursing Whitney Richardson an additional $96.74 $96 for a replacement tire. Entertainment or coming from the committee doesn't need a second. Any questions or discussion? Here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else from the Water Committee? I believe that was it. Move on to the Budget Committee. Budget, budget Committee met on April 6, 2021 and made the following recommendations. <clears throat> Transferring the following amounts from the Exit 77 Road Project to the Progress Park Connected Road Project and to authorize payment of the same amount. $1,982,406 transferred from account 8115 Dash four seven zero zero six one transferred to four one zero zero four seven zero zero three five. Also seventeen thousand five hundred ninety four ninety four dollars transferred from the eight one five eight one one five dash four eight nine nine two four 
to the same account 4100-470035 for the amount of $2 million. Can you put that in English? <laughs> yes. You want to explain, Mr. Bear? Yes. This is the, um, the amount that it is coming transferred from is the amount that we have borrowed to do the exit 77 road and lots um, that we had the design plan, but then you all said not to proceed with doing it. We had borrowed the $2 million. We still owe VDOT $4.3 million for the connector road project on our revenue sharing project. So we have borrowed $2 million for uh, road construction. We are just moving that from the exit 77 project that we have decided not to do to the, ex to the uh, Progress Park Connector Road project, which uh, just for everybody, just for everybody's purpose. It's, we're putting $5 million and the state's putting about $18 million into that $23 million project. So that is the transfer of that so that we can send this money to VDOT. And then in 2024 or 25, we will owe them the balance of um, about $2.3 million. Any other questions? Come committee doesn't need a second to do a roll call vote. Mr. Smith? Aye. 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 Yep. Aye. Aye. Decla declaring the following vehicle surplus and sold to Enterprise. 2007 Ford Explorer and a 2008 Ford Explorer. Could you read those VIN numbers? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can if you want me to. <laughs> Come committee doesn't need a second. Any questions or discussion? Here and now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Aye. Aye. Yeah. I'll abstain. Abstain. Aye. Aye. So <clears throat> approved. Amending and appropriating $10,000 from the DMV stop fees line item 11003-319027 to account 1213-430150. Any questions or discussion? Here and now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 Transferring $358,225 from account 9000-470240, Barron Springs Community Center, to account 9000-470215, fire equipment for the purchase of turnout gear. Any questions or discussion? Yeah. On July the 1st, 2021, this money is to be put back in the, the budget. What you all have right now is $350,000 proposed in the capital projects budget for next year for turnout gear. The challenge is the turnout gear that is currently under a uh, procurement contract expires May 1st or sometime in May 1st uh, and has to be ordered prior to that time frame. So it just so happened that we had this money already in the budget and the recommendation was to remove, to move this money uh, into that so we can immediately go ahead and order the turnout gear to help all the departments. As you know, we tried VDEM grants, we tried with Land Foundation grants, we've not been able to get any funding to do so. There is still $350,000 in the capital projects budget for next year uh, that you all, as you're finalizing your, final, your budget, could include that for the, the Barron Springs project next year. Okay. And, <laughs> Coy, and, and I knew you were going to have questions, and we discussed at the budget committee. We're not saying that that project's dead, but that money's just sat there for two years. And I even asked Mr. Bear, I said, correct me if I'm wrong, if we find the land, we can amend and appropriate $350,000 of the meeting to put in that line out. Right. So I just want to. Okay, I just didn't want you leaving people in the cold down there. So. Well, it's, you know, the project's not dead. We've, we've hit some bumps. I, I'll speak for myself. I'm in favor of, of building one, but we got to find some suitable land at a reasonable price. And that's actually what we discussed in the budget committee that you know, we need to figure out the land aspect of it. And, you know, we're, Sorry. we're not shutting it down by any stretch of the imagination. 
Any other questions or discussion? I, I, I don't want y'all to come in here and pull no woolly wool on me. Have I, <laughs> have I ever lied to you? <laughs> if you can't trust the politician. I ain't known you very long, but you know. <laughs> Let's get deep into it. I'm going to roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 And Supervisor McRoberts, I will say the budget committee may back me up on this. I told them that I, I hated this in the process, but we needed $360,000, and there was $360,000 just sitting in the budget that we knew we were not using this year. But uh, well, I understand that. That, that. that ain't what bothered me, but. What bothers me, y'all take that three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I ain't got nothing to work with next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is now you got to have three. You got to have three other votes, right? Yeah. <laughs> You've worked hard for this. Week, hey, Coy. You. That hurt my feelings, Coy. That don't happen very often. <laughs> what you know, we, we'd have worked harder on it, but you said if you, if that thing got built, you wasn't running again, and we just couldn't <laughs> let you. Know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're gonna squeeze four more years out of it. No, Anything I, I, else from the budget committee? No, so there's all, Mr. Chairman. All right, next item on the agenda, supervisor's time, Mr. Smith. I do. I have several things, actually. Uh, the first thing is um, a lot of people's concern about CVS buying um, Counts Drugs out, not only closing the Counts Drug here, the one that's over in Bland County, but the one down at the Fort Chisel um, Medical Center. Uh, that's where we're hearing most of what I'm hearing most of the issues with. Uh, there's a lot of people depend on that pharmacy down there, and they're wanting to know if there's anything that the county can do to keep that pharmacy open that's attached to that medical center. I mean, there's elderly people that physically can't come to town, and that uh, operation there delivers the uh, prescriptions to them. So it is a big concern for the Fort Chisel area. I know Coy's sharing in that with me. But uh, if anything that we can do to keep that, I know me and Mr. Vault had a conversation I think Martin's Pharmacy actually come to Rural Retreat, something similar, uh, a couple years back. But uh, we need to do what we can to help the citizens down there and to keep that pharmacy going. So uh, any support I can get, they can get, we I'm sure it'd be appreciated. Jamie, I'll uh, I'll reach out to the, the pharmacist in Retreat Martin's. Um, you know, we we lost our pharmacy, and it was it, it you know it was a burden on the people. Um, I'm, I'm now a gold card member at Martin's. Um, I'm there about every other day. Um, um, so I've talked to Kristen and maybe, I can't remember the gentleman that owns it, but yep. see if he'd be interested in me. All right, good deal, appreciate it. Uh, and then uh, I didn't have time to send this to you, Mr. Byer or, or Mr. Fowler, but uh, Reed Creek Drive, I think it's from the residents. Um, 1414 Reed Creek Drive to 1778. It's along the creek there. The road's in pretty bad shape. I uh, just happened to notice that on the way back from turkey hunting Saturday. 1414 to what? To 1778. Okay. And then uh, I was at the Farm Bureau meeting last night and um, the conversation came up about the, the property that's not being used where the lots were at or we talked about selling the lots off. Um, they are wanting to know if we were ever gonna put signage up advertising that there's lots for sale down there. There's really nothing there but the trailer with the Apex Center sign on it. So, you know, if we could advertise that we do have lots available down there, um, even if we get with a joint IDA to, for them to promote that, um, to try to get businesses in. Uh, and then the email that I sent you, Mr. Byer, about the um, the industry, yes. Um, we need to go into closed session to talk about another industry. Okay. So we can we can talk about that one, but contact has been made uh, okay. with the industry. Good deal. And then the last thing I got, Mr. Chairman, is uh, um, from the Farm Bureau meeting last night. They're they're concerned. You know, we're losing a lot of ag industry here. The dairy dairy farming industries um, seem to be a thing of the past. It seems like, and they want to know. Uh, what our plans is to invest in ag type industries to bring them back to Wood County. Um, so I just, you know, I'm just passing that along. That's, that's a concern from the Farm Bureau. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Cook, uh, do you have a follow up on the phone call I made to you about the, the 
trash? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Dumford has gone up there, uh, looked at both of those. Uh, one of them looked like a bunch of trash had been burnt in the process. Wasn't certain if that was like that when you were there, if they burned it afterwards in the process. He is uh, working uh, with both landowners. The one that's got the business associated with it, he has been working with them. They've actually, prior to this, have gotten rid of a bunch of junk vehicles that are there. He's still working with them to get rid of the junk that is there. So, yes, he is working on both of those. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Ms. Lawson. May, may I interrupt you one second? Your Graham's Forge complaint, is it at the bridge over Reed Creek on trash? Yes. It's at the, oh, there at the mill? And it's on the south side. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. I, uh, I meant to ask you that. Uh, he was trying to figure out exactly which location it is, south side of the bridge. Yeah, it's on the side of the swinging bridge. Ms. Lawson. I don't have anything additional. Thank you. Mr. McRoberts. Uh, the only thing I have is Shady River Drive. They say that... Uh, their uh, state's taking care of half week till they get to the top of the hill and then forget the rest of it. Okay. Need the rest of Shady River Drive. I, uh, I also have had some people call me about the closing of the pharmacy at Fort Chill. That's all I have. Mr. Horney? I uh, had two, two things. Uh, did you ever get any response back from VDOT about the uh, catch ponds or whatever you want to call them on St. Peter's Road? I have not gotten a response to, from them, but I did discuss with them, and Mr. Kennedy got in touch with them of the complaint about the water down there, and I actually rode down there and looked at it. The one's holding quite a bit of water and sediment in it. The one on the far side, far side is... is but yes, we did ask them to look at that, that it was creating problems for the residents, see if there's anything they could do to clean up or anything on that side of it. All right. Uh, the other one was, I, you mentioned it to me earlier, about Porter Road. Uh, I had a lady call me wanting to talk about getting Porter Road paved. You said it's not eligible for the six-year plan because it's not rural rustic. What other options I, uh, are available? I have asked uh, Mr. Um, Can we just tax the, the rich people that live on it? I've asked Mr. That's what I told him. I said, have they looked at just doing the upper end because that's where most people live. Now that I know which road you're talking about, nothing can be done. So. Nothing, absolutely. That's what I thought. Um, um, let me go back and ask them if there is a way on a, a sort of section of it to do like some of the other roads where you're only doing right. parts in the process and, and see what they say. Um, we've had a couple avenues in the past where we've been able to do that, uh, and we'll see if, if that's an, an option. Um, and I've asked him to have everything to us for the uh, April 27th meeting for us to review the list of roads, what's eligible, not, what's not eligible, and we'll ask him if there's any other funding options that are out there. I mean, just to clarify, Porter Road never was on the six-year plan, right? To my knowledge, Porter Road was not on the six-year plan. Okay, because she said it, she had been told it was, but of course we all know that yeah. how rumors get started, so. We can, we, we can go back, I, I've got... I know there's at least 20 years of it on, on the file in there that we can look at and see, but. Uh, All right, I mean, is a tax district a possibility for paving it? Yes, it could be. I told her I thought that was one of the options, but I wasn't sure. Okay, I believe that's all I have. Mr. Terry. Just a couple things, Mr. Oh. Chairman, thank you. Oh. Um, first, Mr. Hankins, thank you very much. I think the trash at Royal Street Lake that I had a call about has been addressed, and, and I appreciate that. I think I actually think you guys were already on it before I got the phone call, mm -hmm. so I greatly appreciate that. Um, and th this is some, the second of the three things I have is uh, something in Mr. Vault's district. 
the gap of the Ridge Road, somebody said that there's some pretty bad washout places on it, Mr. Long. I, have, I didn't get a chance to ride up there because they called me about 4.30 today. I about guarantee it. So if we can maybe look at gap of the Ridge Road. Yep. <clears throat> and then the last thing, I want to clear up these people that come and, and fussed about my post. I've done that on my personal page. I've done it as a citizen. I said absolutely nothing about transgenders. I said nothing about anything other than I just put her letter out there. Her letter said that God does not belong in government and God does not belong in school. I have an issue with that. As an elected official, I don't care what they want to do. If they want to arrest me, I will stand for God and they can throw me under the jail. I'll just, I could care less. But that's where I stand on things. I did want to clarify that I did not do it as a board member. I've done it as a citizen. And if they don't like my opinion as a citizen, I could care less. They can vote me out. But I will not back down and stand for God. And I will use my seat and my voice for God, whether people like it or not. Thank you. All right. I got a couple of things. Uh, I'm passing around the letter that I just got this morning. Uh, Chief Evans from Retreat Fire Department sent us a very nice thank you letter for the truck and the turnout gear washer dryer um, apparatus and I also run into Chris Collier today um, from Max Metis Fire Department and he wanted me to express his appreciation for them receiving the same um, and my normal trash talk um, I, Mr. Bear, I, I don't know. Do you have any suggestions how we can get these trustees? Other than us continuing to push at the New River Regional Jail meetings, I do not know um, uh, any other avenue that we have. Um, you, uh, Mr. Hankins has assisted, and y'all may have seen the post it put out trying to get citizens that, that are interested trying to help and clean up over the, the next week, which basically falls on Earth Day during that week and, and trying to help out. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of citizens are sending flames. Um, I have not heard, you may know if, the, if they've had the crew back in Wythe County since those first couple of days or not. I, uh, I've not gotten any calls from anybody that says they've been out there. So. Chief Foster, do you know, have, have we had the trustee the skeleton crew. My understanding was Mondays and Tuesdays, and I've only spoken with them verbally, probably twice. <laughs> you have that gentleman's contact information. Will you check with him tomorrow and, and see if they're still? I, what they did, they did a great job, and I know they're like I said, they just have a skeleton crew. But let's yeah. can you check and make sure? We were pretty much assured we were going to have them on Monday and Tuesday. I'll make sure. And that's all I have. Um, well, one thing on that, Brian, I just want, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, uh, to add to that, the gentleman that was needing the community service hours, that Andy, uh, Mr. Fowler just sent me all the information. He filled it out and took it to the uh, Withwell Regional Office here. Okay. And um, they told him I didn't know what he was talking about. I'll follow up with him. It's been a couple weeks since I talked to him, but I okay. know he's eager to work off those hours. All right. And the, the cleanup day, I... I don't know if you all are interested in getting together and doing one section or just doing a section in your district or y'all got plans that day or days if y'all want to get together. Um, we've got the van. We can use the van. Um, if you do hear of any community groups that are going to do any areas 21 scares me. Yeah. Um, but if there's any group that's doing 21, um, I'll come out and if I have to get the van or whatever and put some flashing lights because, I mean, we don't want anybody getting hit. Right. And 21's a, it's a dangerous road. That that one scares me and it's it's trashed up. So. What day is this? And I'll just stay at home. <laughs> it'll be you, I thought you were going to say you come hit me. No, I was going to say if I stay at home, it'll be safer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and did, you, did you say Earth Day, the 24th? Well, basically, you're... Or that week? The week it's the... Go ahead. It's the 22nd. 22nd. But, but we thought making it a week-long cleanup instead of doing it 
just a, a one day event would you know, get more people to uh, participate. 17 through 24th are the dates, right? Hmm. All right, uh, next we have entertain a motion to go into closed session under, and I want to add personnel on that too, Mr. Barry. Well, what's the code? 2.237.11. A1. A1 for industrial, for personnel. Oh, let me get back to it here. I take back what I said about it. No, it's too late. Uh, 3711A1 for personnel matters. Um, and um, you think we know this by heart, but now. A5 for prospective industry or business, and that is going to be um, project flow and project thin foil. All right, entertain a motion to go into closed session under 3711A1 personnel, 3711A5 project flow and project aluminum foil. Oh, ten, 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 ten foil. foil. <laughs> have a motion, have a second. second. Close enough. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now in closed session. Yeah. Resolution certification to close meeting or as with County Board of Supervisors convened the close meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative court of voting in accordance with the provisions of Virginia Freedom of Information Act and for a section 2.237.12 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the Wythe County Board of Supervisors that such a meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wick County Board of Supervisors hereby certify that to the best of its knowledge, one, on public business matters, lawfully exempted from open meeting requirement by Virginia law will discuss in the closed meeting to which the certification resolution apply, and two, only such public business matters were identified in the most convenient closed meeting were. were heard, discussed, or considered by which county board or super. Who in the head is doing that pecking? You heard the excellent reading of the certification by Mr. Right. McRoberts. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. I'll, or we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 Mr. Bear, anything else? Oh, I guess, Mr. Chairman, we do need to discuss. Obviously, we'll be meeting next Thursday uh, with the school board uh, for a work session uh, here at our facility. We can meet here. Somebody have a phone near a cell phone? It's oh, okay. Uh, always here in a... Um, they have a work session with them for scheduled for next Thursday at 6 o'clock. Uh, we can meet here. We can meet down in the uh, EOC room, whichever you all would prefer to meet at. Uh, we'll look at doing it here. Um, I emailed you all Friday the budget uh, numbers. You see where we are. Uh, we're relatively close. We're still off um, a little bit. We need to have, obviously, a, a BOS work session. was afraid tonight would probably be long as it was and not want to do it tonight. So um, is there an option that you all would like to, to have a recess to a work session to talk about the budget? Next Monday is a fire committee meeting, and next Tuesday, three of the board members have a JPSA meeting at 6 o'clock. So Monday and Tuesday of next week do not work well. 
I don't know if Thursday of this week works well. And I won't be here. I'm leaving tomorrow. Thursday's not a good day for me. We could look at, well, I don't think anybody wants to look at Friday. Stacy's gone. You're back next week, right, Stacy? Yes, sir. Saturday. I'm back Sunday. <laughs> we we could come in here on Wednesday night at, at 5 o'clock or 5.30 and do budget deliberation next Wednesday night and then come back here Thursday night for the school board. That's on the 21st? 21st. Yeah. There's, there's Nancy and Wednesday's fine with me. Yeah, Wednesday 21st? Well, we got a meeting the next day, John, or Coy. Coy. We got a meeting the next day, Thursday. Yeah. Six. <coughs> no, it's next week, the 21st, or 22nd. So I'd say y'all set the time for what the earliest y'all can get here on the 21st. I can be here at 4 o'clock. I get up at 10. I get up at 10. Four thirty. Is that a motion, Mr. Smith, to recess to four thirty on Wednesday? <laughs> Second. Well, you don't even check emails. So what is that going to do? I can't get one week. So next Wednesday at four thirty, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, you actually do. I'm working again, ain't it? Yeah. And if time permits, uh, we need to, the, the Water Committee looked at a rate structure and they looked at this uh, long-term plan. Um, we need to schedule a meeting for that um, as soon as possible as well, but obviously we got to get this budget finalized. Um, and... So I don't know that there's a chance to do that on the 21st or the 22nd. But um, following our 27th meeting, we need to have that meeting. Uh, I think Mr. Cook would agree with me and Mr. Horney and Mr. McRoberts. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about, the rate structure and the projects as well for the master plan. Did uh, Speaking of water, did you... He, uh, email Mr. Weaver back. I have not emailed Mr. Weaver back, but I will make a note to email I, him. I know you're busy, way. but I just wanted to remind you. Um, I I was trying to tell him when I was meeting with uh, Sean Ut, and Sean and I played phone tag today, but I'll email Mr. Weaver in the morning. I'm supposed to talk to Mr. Ut at 10 o'clock tomorrow to set a time frame for us to meet and discuss the interconnect. And I was getting ready to ask you what uh, Mr. Rudd had to do with it, but I keep forgetting he's in Smith County now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> All right, anything else, Mr. Hankins? You asked us about uh, trucks from AEP. We put in that request for uh, getting a surplus truck. It's just as they come up, so there's no guarantee that we'll get one or that we'll get one soon. But we've asked, we're also going to ask the railroad because they have some as well. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, and just real quick, the comprehensive plan, the uh, kickoff meeting with the consultant is Thursday with staff, and then we'll meet with the planning commission and try to kickstart that. Martha, you got anything? All right, we'll be in recess until April the 21st at 4.30. I thought you were kidding about the motion. I'm sorry. Uh, Don actually says to recess, we should have a motion and a second to go into recess. You, so you had a second. I got, here. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Now we'll recess until the 21st and 4.30.